Hello, Hello everyone. Welcome, Welcome back, back to episode 3 of our CICD pipeline for network automation, infrastructure automation, series of streams. So I'm excited to be back week 3. And we left off last time uh, with the GitHub configuration where we wanted to upload whatever we've done so far. The, the shell scripts, the docker compose, the yaml file with the two services that we have, and the GitLab service and the runner. So I wanted to actually push them to a central location on GitHub, but then we ran out of time last week. So we're going to pick up where we left off. And I'm going to show you how to actually use github.com with the two-factor authentication, how you can generate the token, and how you can actually use that token to push uh, your code to your central repo while you have an account with 2FA uh, enabled on it. So, um, hope, hope you folks have joined. joined. Let me quickly check uh, the chat here, see who we have. It's only me for now. Jeff, Jeff where, where are you? I miss you over here. here. Uh, so, so if folks, folks, if you join later, you have any questions, questions drop a message in there. I'm looking, looking at the chat every, every once in a while uh, and answering any questions, questions that might come up. All right, All right so, so let's go and uh, have, have a look, look at github.com. So, so I'm here. This is the repo that I created. created. Last, last time, time. Right. right? And let's, let's see how, how I can push the files that I've created so far to this repo uh, while having my account with 2FA enabled. So, first, first of all, of all I probably have to log back in, sign back in. Okay, okay so it was cached, we remember that uh, I'm authenticated credentials. Uh, if you remember that is are, are in there. So let's, let's go ahead, ahead and, and um, try, try to push the changes, changes to this repo, right? right? So, so first, first I'll, I'll log back into, into my CentOS box. box. Uh, we need that password. And, and let's see what I have so far here. I have a Docker Compose, a setup, the shell, and then the verify runner is shell script that we started creating and we didn't finish yet. So I'm going to also finish that one today. But I also wanted to show you uh, how to use Visual Studio Code and to remotely connect and edit code with Visual Studio Code but edit source code and files and everything on a remote machine. The remote machine, in my case, is my CentOS instance. So I'm going to get the IP address of this. And it's 10.211.55.7. Right, so let me go ahead and see if I can connect with Visual Studio Code. I have here the remote explorer, right? So you would need to install the remote tools for Visual Studio Code to be able to SSH remotely to servers, boxes, whatever it is. Then you want to edit code in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add here one more host. And I'm going to do SSH parallels as the user name that parallels created for me when we installed CentOS a couple of weeks ago. Right, so it's going to be 55.7, right? That's the IP address. I'm going to press enter. Um, that's fine. And I'll do a connect here. 
So I enter the password, but I'm trying to connect SSH into my centralized virtual machine. So here, just put in my password. And once again, Should be connected now remotely. And I am. Right, so I'm connected remotely by SSH to the CentOS box. And now I can start uh, at slash home slash browse. I do OK. So that basically asking for a password. Do you trust the authors of the files in these folders? And uh, trust the authors of all the files? Yes, I trust the authors because I know it's me. And there you go. I have a SSH remote connection into the CentOS box, into the VM uh, that's running right here. Right. So now I can go and explore uh, the directory tree over here, see where things are, and I can also have a look at Docker Compose file that we created. Uh, I don't want the extension that for demo. We can check the shell script that we've also created so far, and verify runners. Shell script that we're going to finish today. And I mean, you could use whatever ID right, that you're comfortable with. I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code because that's the one that I, I like currently. Use any other ID to connect. Um, and I'm connecting so that I can more easily copy paste when I create documents and scripts, right, instead of going here and typing everything, like we've seen last time, just kind of connect remotely, more easy copy paste when I create these files. Okay, so I want to, on the source, right, uh, I want to clone this repo, first of all, the csd-twitch. And I see Jeff joining. Hey, Jeff, thanks, thanks for joining. Um, so let me clone this repo. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see where am I in parallels. Let me change the source. And once I'm here, I'm just going to do a git clone this repo in the same location. Right? I'm just going to move off the dead what I've created in this repo. So let's go. Uh, this is not an empty directory. Oh, I already have it. Oh, I already have it. I already have it. I already moved the create underscore environment last time. So that's how we ended up the session last, uh, last week. So now if you remember, if I do a git status, we are ahead by one commit. If I do a git push here, it's going to try to commit the changes uh, once to sign in using GitHub. OK, I'll allow it. And I'll authorize Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to put my um, authentication code here. GitHub. Okay. 
Okay, okay. so, so it actually pushed it by using Visual Studio Code, right, and authenticating, passing it, which is nice, because if this wouldn't have happened, if I would have done it uh, like we tried last week, straight from you, if you remember, uh, tried to do a git push and failed, right, because it couldn't authenticate, so the workaround for that is <coughs> You would have to go under your settings once you log in. Under the settings, you have developer settings here at the bottom on the left. And then you would have personal access tokens. So you would need to generate the token. See here, I have one generated. Um, you can have an expiration time with it, right? So it expires for me in two weeks. It's usually 30 days. That is uh, by default, it's active. So, if you have 2FA enabled on your GitHub account, right, you need to have also a token if you're not using something like Visual Studio Code. Right? If you're just doing a Git push from a terminal, uh, you need to create this token and you need to pass it on after that with this command. Right? So you have a Git remote set URL origin, HTTP, if you have in that token that you generated, and GitHub username, my case is GitHub, and that would be the repository CSTD dash dash. So you would have to add the Git remote server origin and passing the token this way. So after you do this, you generate the token, you do this Git command, uh, then you're able to do Git push from your terminal. When I'm using Visual Studio Code, you've seen it popped up to authenticate. It asked me for my two-factor authentication, and it didn't work without having to pass in the token in, my, in the call. So that's an advantage, another advantage of using something like uh, Visual Studio Code when you start creating and, uh, and working on code and on shell scripts, whatever that is, even on the remote machines that we have here. Okay, so, so let me see then if I go back to my account, account let's see if it works. I have CSD Twitch. Twitch. And, and there, there we go. go. Create environment, right? It's right, right here. I have my four files that we created two weeks ago. That's just, just in one week ago. Uh, is the time something wrong with the time on this PC? Let's see. Do a date. April 20th. Oh, <laughs> interesting. So we're six days behind on the VM. Um, it looks like NTP is now working over there. <laughs> That's why it shows two weeks ago because it thinks that it's back in time. <laughs> um, so there's no NTP. Let's see, there's an NC, NTP, and there's nothing. sudo yeah, install and see ntpd just gotta go and uh, pull down ntp hmm what's the CentOS 9, let's see, curious, just a bit of a side quest here with NTP installed. A bit of a side quest trying to figure out NTP on CentOS. Uh, configure NTP server. I'll install and configure NTP. Let's see what is this. Timeless introduction. So, so NTP not to time protocol, protocol right? It's a protocol developed if you don't know for keeping time up to date with a central NTP server. server. So they have different layers uh, or strata, stratums of these servers, and the most accurate 
NPC, NPC servers, servers we're talking about quartz crystal synchronizations, right? It's the, the most exact and precise time that you can get. Those are usually the uh, stratum zero, I want to say. So it's like a, at the top, right? Those are the most precise clocks and, and then as you go down stratum one would sync, sync with stratum zero, zero clocks and, and it's, it's just a way a, a protocol of distributing time and making sure that uh, you are you know, in sync with time servers that, that are very precise. Um, so, so let's see how we can do this on central quickly. quickly. Uh, okay, okay so, so that's, that's actually, actually a crony D Sometimes comes with all things uh, right out of the box or crowing. It expands upon NTPD's functionality somewhat, but NTPD may still be preferring in some instances. Um, okay, okay, so yeah, yeah I was familiar with NTPD, NTPD that's why I, installed, I tried to install with YAM install, install NTPD, but it, it looks like, like oh, this is on CentOS 7 or 9. 7 or 9. So. CentOS has by default Crony D, so it's a daemon we can call Crony, looks like. like. Uh, stop, disable, uh, status, and then installing, oh, just NTP. Install, configuring, and check in the firewall. So yeah, how come this is the goal for me to so install NTP? I think to mention NTP. So this is an older document. And let me see if Chrome is running. Because if it's running, it's not doing a good job. <laughs> I'm here, uh, like, like what, six, six, six days, days behind, right? right? Thinking that it's April 20th. <laughs> For whatever, whatever reason. So let's see. Sudo. System CTL uh, status. Chrome. Chrome D. It is active. It's running. It's loaded. Uh, but system clock is wrong by a bunch of seconds. I know. Can synchronize those selectable sources offline. So there's a couple of them online, but it cannot synchronize with them. Replaced with. Right, so you would try to force a sync or maybe just install NTP. Um, but let's see if I can, can force it to set, set the date to something. Uh, display the date to the bug. Set the time described by string. Okay, so, so I do a dash s. That's for setting the time. Format controls the output. Date. Time zone. Uh, example. So let's see. Convert seconds. Show the local time. Show the time zone. Date string. Okay, so let's see if we can set the time to at least April 26th. Uh, Pacific. So we're in the time, right time zone. It's just the date is not right. It's Wednesday, April 26th. And it is 9.19. Point nine twenty and PDT twenty twenty three extra operand twenty six. So it doesn't like it. it doesn't like the date. Come 
first show, show, you can always set it, it should be with S, string, set time described by string, what format should the string be in? Okay, month, day, hour, minute. So, month, day, hour, minute. This is the current time before when I set the system time. Okay, okay. So, so let's, let's try, try to set it this way. way. Date S. That. So it is month, day. Month is zero four, twenty six, nine twenty one, zero nine, twenty one. Invalid argument. Monday, it takes. Okay, okay. So, so let's, let's look how we set this. this. We, we bring, bring the time up to date because it's just. just I'm, I'm trying, trying to fix the fact, fact that it's showing me this two weeks ago, ago and it's actually not two weeks ago, it's been a while ago. So let's, let's try, try to fix that. that. Send to us nine, set date, and time.
car runner, runner and, and make sure, sure that it gets registered with uh, uh, GitLab. GitLab. Right, so, so our, our GitLab, GitLab runner, runner we want to make sure that it's registering with our GitLab, GitLab instance. instance. So, so we, we left off right there. Send, send logging credentials. credentials. Right, we have and the CRS, CRS, CSRF token. token. Then sending the logging credentials. credentials. Uh, let me see. Send the logging credentials with curl. And now we have to do also this. Just gonna copy paste here. Um, what needs to happen next? In our create GitLab token function here. So get, get a personal, personal access, access token. token. Right, right, same, same thing, thing, similar. And, and then we're post the request, request to send general personal access token, token form. And I have a body, body header. header. Uh, personal, personal access, access token. token. And that's, that's the, end the end of the function, function and, and then, then we'll call, call the function. function. Uh, let's call, call the function. function. We created it. We're calling, calling it. And, and this is basically, basically what happens is that it makes sure that, that the runner is correctly registered with GitLab. GitLab. Right, right, we want to make sure that we're able to talk with each other because the runner is a critical component of the CSD pipeline in GitLab. GitLab. If, if the runner is not synchronized with GitLab, GitLab or if they're not working in sync, uh, the CSD pipeline is not going to work at all because the runner, runner process, whenever uh, you do a git push and there's a pipeline configured, and we'll, we'll see when we get there how you configure the pipeline. But the, but the runner process takes the content of the repo, right, right that you just pushed, whatever, whatever change you have done, takes that, that content, content and follows the instructions in the pipeline in the GitLab that has the that YAML file that defines your pipeline. If the runner process is cannot detect that the change has been pushed or is not in sync with the GitLab, then the pipeline is not going to get triggered, the pipeline is not going to work. You're going to have problems. So, so let's, let's save this, this right? Um, this is just verify a, a small shell script to verify that, that uh, the, the runner is synchronized and registered correctly with GitLab. So, so we created that. We have, we have our Docker Compose, we have our setup. setup. SH script, script that we've developed, developed and, and we've wrote written, written uh, in, in the previous sessions, session, right? right? Now, now let's, let's go and create that make file. I was telling about the make file last time, and we're just, just trying to go and do a new file here. here. And we're, we're going to call, call it make file. file. Do you, do you want, want to install, install the recommend extension? extension? Mm, not yet. That's, That's another nice, nice cool thing with Visual Studio Code is that, that you know, whenever I create a file, it automatically detects that it's a make file. Do I want to install additional tools, additional add-ons that Visual Studio Code has to run make files, to configure them, to see if they're correctly defined? So we have all of that. Kind of built in Visual Studio Code, which is nice. It has, has a lot of add-ons and uh, tools, tools you have. have. Well, I have uh, remote explorer that I showed you SSH into my CentOS box. 
the city of the extensions, extensions they, they have hundreds thousands of Jupyter notebooks if you want to uh, if you edit markdown files it has or json files it has linters and it has uh, lots and lots of patterns So let's, so let's go back to our make file. file. The make file is where everything, everything comes together. So here we're going to create EMB. That's what we're, we're going to call it. And we're going to do a couple of things with our make file. Uh, we, we are going to Properties of the setup.sh file. file. So, so we're going to make the user be able to execute the file. file. So I can do a dot slash setup.sh. Setup I can actually execute that file as a user. Right? right. Same, Same thing. Just, just making sure, sure I could have done, done this manually, but we're doing it through a make file. So for the user, I want to also uh, have the execute parameter uh, some plus x for the user account. So what that means is that if I go here, where are we, where is the terminal? So, so if I, I do, do an LS LA, you see here, here I'm going to do a C create environment. You, you see here, here right? Um, the order of so, so read, read write, write. Right. This, this is for user, then root, and then the group. Right, I believe that's, that's what it is. So, so we're just, just making uh, these, these two files, files this, this and this. this. We're going to add the X, X right, right here, here, which, which means that we can run these files as applications. So you can um, run those files. That's, that's what the make file will do for us. So it's verify, verify runners.sh. And, and then, then we're just, just going to actually execute, execute them. them. Right. right. So, so that's, that's all our make file is done. Let's save it. it. And, and now. Let's do a make, make and, and see, see what, what happens. happens. So, so what, what it should happen is I'm changing right, the executable flag for the user account, unload these files, unload the shell scripts, and then, then I'm executing them. So, so by executing setup.sh, that comes into here. here. Right. Right. So, so it's going to do a Docker Compose. compose. Uh, it's, it's going to output the um, standard, standard error to this file. So it's going to create a log file for us. Uh, then it's going to wait for D5C to come online. It's going to use curl to keep every 10 seconds. Try to see if it gets a web server reply from our GitHub post. Uh, once it's online, we're configuring the external URL. Right. So, so we're just updating the gitlab.rb file at this location with the IP address, the local IP address, and we're running a uh, gitlab-ctl reconfigure command to kind of restart the process. Then we're registering the gitlab runner, uh, the gitlab register, 
and we offer also to the local um, standard error and standard output. Right, so it's a chain of events here. We have the make file that calls this script, the setup script calls the Docker compose to the Docker compose command. So it's going to spin up for us uh, Git Z and the runner. So it's going to start the whole process and then it's going to verify runners, make sure the runner is synchronized with Git Okay, so let's give it a try. We do a make here. Bad substitution. Oh, okay, so we have a problem on line 23 for a setup SH script. So let's see, line 23, it's right here. GitLab host, GitLab host, oh, uh, let's see, I think I see what's wrong, and check, yeah, so we have here an extra log sign, let me save it, let's stop this, and we'll start again. So launching GitLab CE and then waiting for GitLab to become available. So let me open up a new tab here and just do a Docker PS. Pseudo. None of the images have actually been brought online. Uh, so let's see, source. And we have that GitLab setup log. And we have mapping values that are not allowing this context. YAML line 3. So YAML line 3, mapping values are not allowed in this context. Uh, so that is a problem. Okay, let's see what went wrong here. Copy this, let's look, see what would be the problem. Context. Let's see what is this? Apply all that I've enabled. I have a YAML file where, as far as I can tell, each element is formed identically, and yet according to YAML lint. Okay, so let's do actually a YAML lint. And let's take our YAML file and just run it to this YAML link. See if it's actually any problems with it. Now, thing to remember here, right, with these linters is if you have any passwords like I have here. Right, uh, or any credentials or any type of sensitive information, um, I would be careful to remove it, right? So I would just change it to something else XXX, XYZ, whatever. Uh, I don't really care because it's the test environment here, so I don't really care about this. But whenever you use a linter online, demo, JSON, you name it, right? Uh, make sure that you don't have your passwords, you know, username and passwords mentioned because 
if you don't know who's running the YAML name website, and they might be saving all of these, right? And they might be saving whatever you're pasting here. And you don't know what's gonna happen with your credentials and where they're gonna end up. So just as a best practice, right? Never, when you use these linters online, and even if you use tools with Visual Studio Code, right? Be careful, linters and all this, because it's just, you know, the apparently part, part of me <laughs> that uh, I'm, I'm always careful with potentials. Oh, I try to be careful with potentials, whatever I paste them, where, right, who, what's, what's happening in this day and age, you have to be super, super careful. Um, and that's chat GPT talking about it, right? You see people generating code with chat GPT. Since we're talking about it, and everybody's up in arms with chat GPT now. Um, same thing. Don't, don't give ChatGPT any, any sensitive information because you don't have at that time. time. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> uh, all, all right, so, so let's go and just check this YAML file, file see if it's any grand problems with it. I'm going to copy it, paste, paste it in here. here. I'm going to do Implicit keys need to be on a single line at line one column long. Uh, implicit keys need to be on a single line. What does that mean? something here, what if I do this and this? Okay, okay so that's a value. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Uh, that's, that's the problem. problem. The YAML was not correct. correct. Right, so, so if, if I, I go, go back here, here version, like that, save it, so, so that's how you specify the version. You have the uh, semicolon here, here, right? That uh, was a mistake that the YAML was just not correct. So if I go back here, this, this is waiting for the Leipzig to become available, available but it's not going to become available because it failed at the first line. So you see here also how nice it is that we have the log files, right? The GitLab set up log quickly, line three, show me. Uh, because it's not allowing this context, context. So, so I started, started looking what's wrong. So now let's go back here, stop it because we know it's not gonna, it's not gonna work because we know that also the Docker containers are not even stopped at all. Right, so no containers is running, nothing is running here. So it was, was going to wait for forever <laughs> for the containers to come online. Okay, okay let's, let's go back now, try to do a make again. Launching GitLab CE. Okay, okay, let's see what happened now. The containers are still not there. If I do a, oh, oh, permission denied, denied while trying to connect to the Docker daemon. daemon. Okay, okay, so, so I might have to run, run this as sudo. Right, so, so I'm going to stop, stop it. And we're going to do sudo make. And what about now? Sudo log. Okay, okay, so, so now, now I'm start pulling GitLab C. Right, we see here the logs is GitLab pulling and then runner one pulling. So, so it's pulling the GitLab and the runner from um, Git uh, from uh, from GitHub. Oh. All right, is Taking a bit of time, there are very large images. It's downloading everything. And let's see, we can do tell. Because uh, at point all 
because then you just hold all the way away. Right, and we see here, here oh, keep changing, but I don't want to change the terminals. So it's launching the type C. Right, right, so, so that means that it's pulling out the images like we've seen. seen. And then, then it's, it's going to follow, uh, it's going to mount the volume, stop the ports, right? right? It's going to pass these environment variables into it. it. Same, Same thing with the runner, it's going to pass these uh, variables in. Got, got the IP address, address the volumes, uh, mapping all of that. And we're basically right here. Right here. Right. Step, Step one, launching the left C. So you've got your compose. And, and it's bringing up, up both of these Docker containers. containers. So, so it's extracting, so you pull them out and extract them. You see there's progress. Cool. Uh, 1.5 out of 1.3 gigs. But it's doing, doing its thing. thing. Right? It's, it's going to take a bit of time. time. To pull pull out everything, you extract them, them, and then bring the containers, containers online. online. And uh, let's see, Docker PS. They did not started, started yet, they're still getting pulled down and extracting from the archive. Okay, so that's, that's just something, something that's going to take a bit of time. time. Let's see, do we have any questions? Any, any folks? See. The, the folks on the stream, stream thanks for joining, by the way. way. If you have any questions about this, any suggestions, drop them, them in the chat, chat while we wait for, for the containers to get started here. here. Let's see. That's, That's the extracting. extracting. Um, So, so it's, it's moving, moving along, along right? right? We're, We're making, making progress. progress. You, you saw all the troubleshooting steps that, that I went through. The demo, demo file. file. Well, uh, I didn't, didn't have the version and the second column over there. there. Um, the fact that I have to write that root couldn't connect to the Docker socket. A um, couple, couple of issues that we had while uh, getting started, but we're making progress. So now it's extracting the images. Let's see. Okay, okay so pull, pull complete. complete. GitLab has, has been pulled. Creating the network, network for it. There, there we go. Creating the volumes and mapping them. them. Um, so, so the containers are created. The runner and GitLab one, and now they're starting. Right. right so, so now if I do a sudo docker ps, there, there we go. go. I should, I should be able, able to see the two services, two certain containers that we've uh, instantiated with the Docker Compose. Right? We, we have, have our GitLab C and then the GitLab Runner. runner. Um, and this can I do. If I do that. Can I match it on one screen? screen. Let, Let me expand, expand this. Oh, there, there we go. go. So, so we have a container ID, right? The, the images, images that are being used uh, has, has been, been created, created 51, 51 seconds, seconds ago. Uh, uh, it's healthy starting. So it lets it's still the starting stage. Mapping ports. It has ports 202443. And it's mapping port the between the container and CentOS. Right, so it is still starting, but a minute. It's going to take a couple of minutes here to get the GitLab C started. It's a pretty large image, as we've seen. But it's moving along. Right, so launching, we're at the second stage of our setup script, script. Waiting, waiting for GitLab, GitLab to become, become available. So now every, every 10, 10 seconds we're doing that curl. Right, so, so same, same thing, thing I could check. Hit the browser, go 10, 2, 1, 1, 7 And 
we, we see, see that it's not available, available yet. yet. That's, That's what, what the pro command does, right? It's basically every 10 seconds, you're trying to access HTTP on this IP, well, local, local IP, for port 80, and, and it's like, is the, the web server running yet or not? No. no. So, so then it tries again in 10 seconds, seconds and that's, that's what basically what happens right here. This is curl, this is checking, doing a web request, talking about post, post every 10 seconds, seconds waiting, waiting for it to become online. Uh, become online. So let's see. Starting, still, still starting, about, about two minutes ago. ago. It starts as a bit like coming, coming online. Um, and hopefully they'll be online before we have a pop today. Um, made some, some good progress, progress right? so, so I showed you Visual Studio Code, code first of all, how, how to remotely connect. connect. Um, you, you would basically start from the extensions here, you search for remote. And there's, and there's a bunch, bunch of options, options. so uh, there's, there's more development, development an extension pack, so this is kind of the one I would suggest uh, you install the remote development one. There's, there's also remote SSH, joint pricing, remote explorer, remote, remote tunnels, right. uh, remote uh, clusters. Uh, so, so the remote development, development is, is the one I would suggest I have the remote, remote explorer here. here. So that's, that's the one I currently have. have. I'm, I'm connected, connected to 10.211.55.7, which is my centralized box. box. Right. And, and then, then once you're connected, you can go to explorer and, and have access to the folders on your remote machine. machine. So, so you can, can you know, edit uh, locally on, on your on your machine. machine. Yeah. So, so let's, let's see. Uh, Keep that see still starting. Take a couple, couple more minutes. minutes. Uh, uh, let's, let's see the logs. How do they look? look. So the so containers, containers running started. started. The containers the GitLab GitLab one started. started. So, so that's kind of where we stand with our logs. And, and I was just waiting for GitLab CE Community Edition. edition to come, come online. online. All right, All right. Seven, seven minutes, minutes. Yeah. Time. let's, let's see. see. Uh, still starting. Um, so, so then, then hopefully, hopefully we get to, to, to see it started, started now. If not, we'll, we'll pick, pick up, up next week. week. And we, we have GitLab, GitLab start, right? right? We, we have GitLab. GitLab or, or we, we will, will hopefully have, have GitLab and the runner running. So in these three sessions, three hours, hours right? right? We install our server, our central server, server, server environment, Docker, Docker all the prerequisites. We, we built, built our setups, setups shell scripts, our, our Docker compose YAML, and, and now we're at the stage where we're running the, the containers. containers. Once, Once they, they start, start then, then we're going to move into the next stage, and we're going to start having a look at GitLab CE, we're going to create a user, because we have root by default, we're going to create an actual developer user. And uh, we're going to start looking at the pipeline. I'm going to start writing the script for the pipeline that we're going to run. We're going to have three stages for our pipeline, we're going to talk about it in the following weeks. Um, and, and I'll, I'll show you how to build, build it, and we'll also, also have a look at how to build a Docker container, a Docker image, right, with, with all the prerequisite tools that you need to run your pipeline. So we'll, so we'll have a look at that in the following weeks. weeks. But, but for now, unhealthy. unhealthy. So that's, that's a problem. Why is it unhealthy? So what, so what I've, I've seen, seen is, is that it might, might take in some cases a couple of extra minutes, but we can, we can also check the logs. So, so let's see. see. GitLab is taking too much time to respond. It's a 502. 
That's what, That's what I'm, I'm getting. getting. So it's, it's a server, server problem. But, but it could, could be just that, that we need a bit more time to wait for it to come, all, to come online. So let, let me see. It's an LD for seven minutes. minutes. Mm. So it's, it's a 502, it's a server, server problem. problem. Um, and we're, we're going to try to see if we have, have a look, look at the logs. All right, so, so we're going to do Docker Hell. I think it was, it was uh, the name of the engine that logs. Uh, log level. Debug. Management commands. Image, network plugins, scan system, fast volume now. Common commands, run exact, build, pool, promotion, is not the log out, search, version info. Set, list containers, no build, no. Not the images. Management commands, builder, build, compose, container, context, access, network plugins, can. Let's see, container, Docker, container, help. Well, just we have a container, can I have a check, check with the uh, little box? box. I'm going right to try to find here. here. Come, Come on, Docker. Uh, container, so I can do copy, create, exact, export, kill the logs. Fetch the logs of the container. Container, container commands, so if I do logs, that's not going to probably asking, asking for the container ID. Logs. So we're so seeing uh, the VM is a bit bogged down, down right? Because it started with FC. I might have, have to increase the resources that I have on this. Just give me a bit more memory. Yeah, yeah it's it from a so this, we might, we might have, have to resize, resize it next time. Bump, bump up the CPU a little bit more. Uh, uh, let's, let's see how, how it behaves. Come on, logs. It's, it's, it's a bit, bit too slow. slow. It's um, concerningly slow, slow here. here. This is still, still waiting for it to become available. available. Um, Let's see if you change anything here. Try refresh. Still, still a 502. 502. Is it? It's still thinking. thinking. But, but it, it looks, looks like, like the lost connection, connection. Yes. yes, to my, my VM. Mm. Mm. All, right. All right, so, so I, I can, can, can I, I, I might have to restart, restart it, and then we'll reboot we'll the whole thing. thing. I, think I think it might need to be more resources, or oh, it's back connected. connected. So here. here. Oh, there, oh, there we go. go. It's, it's showing that, that it's trying to connect SSH. Uh, or so, so it, it has some trouble connecting, and also on the console here, here have some, some troubles logging in. So we'll so pick back up from where we left, left off, right? right? Containers came, came online, but, but in you know, the healthy, healthy stage, and, and it looks like, like our centralized policy is struggling to run everything. everything. So, so we'll pick back up, troubleshoot this next time. Maybe next, next week, week same, same time, time Wednesday, is 9 a.m. Pacific. Looking we'll forward to seeing you folks. The, the ones that join, thanks so much for joining. We hope it was useful. And, and see you on the next one. Take, take care, everyone. everyone.